Oh, oh my gosh. There's our no, little pony in the backyard. It's so enchanting here. I, I love it. Yeah. I love our home. All right. Well, uh, yeah, what? It's enchanting, too. I know. Ooh, and everything she you. brought today is, too. And when I see beautiful flower like these, I think of Mother's Day, of course. Yep. And just in time, we partnered with Retail Me Not, and we're giving away 10 $1,000 cash cards to 10 lucky moms. And all you have to do is upload a video of your kids telling us why you are the best mommy in the world. That's right. And all entries must be under 30 seconds in length. And the 10 winning videos videos will be announced on our Home and Family Facebook page on Friday, May 6th. So for all your Mother's Days out, uh, for all your Mother's Day savings, be sure to download the Retail Me Not mobile app. Thousands of online and in-store coupons are waiting there for you. All right, filling us in on one of the most popular flowering plants in the world, Shirley Bob Shaw talking about the Gerber Bear, Gerber Bear, 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 yeah, Bear, yeah. Dad. Said, Which I, one is I, it? I, I always thought it was a Gerber Daisy up until well, today. You know, I didn't no, know. No, that's good. Yeah. Gerber, Gerbera, Gerbera. Okay. And actually, people in the garden industry, we all say it differently, but we all know what we're talking, we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about the fifth most popular cut flower in the world. And you can see why. Look mm. at how beautiful and colorful and bold. It's like a party. It's a happy face. It is a happy mm -hmm. flower, and the colors are so vibrant. Well, how many varieties of these are there? Well, there's three different types that I wanted to present to you guys today so okay. that you can understand, you know, am I getting the right Gerbera for my yard? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, first of all, I have some indoor and I have outdoor ones, and they are different. Right here, this beautiful little petite one is an indoor Gerbera. What makes this different from the medium and the large, which are for the outside, these are gonna stay small and they're only gonna bloom for a short time. How short is short, short? Okay, short meaning about maybe two months. Okay. And, but a really interesting thing about them guys is that these will probably give you about 15 max flowers throughout that season, which is good for an indoor plant, right? Because it has a very small root system. Hey. This is, and I'm gonna show you, can't wait to show you the big root system, but this is a small root system. So it, it's just gonna give you that much and then you can change it out. I have it in a pretty little uh, Box, basin. Yeah. yeah, it's cute, but that is a beautiful little plant and it also has the distinction, guys, I'm really happy to announce this, that NASA made a, an extensive uh, study about plants that clean the air, and this Gerbera daisy is the number one flowering plant huh. that cleans benzene, uh, a toxic chemical, out of the air, and really? it emits uh, oxygen, wow. and, it, and it just does an incredible what job. A little guy you yeah, are. It's a worker. He is wow. a worker, worker bee. flower. Yes. Now we go to our outdoor Gerbera. Yes. Now, what I need to say about outdoor is if any of you have had failure with Gerbera daisies in the past, it's for a reason. You know, Gerbera daisies by nature, they attracted pests and they had diseases, but there's been a lot of innovations and there's breeders all over the world, but especially one in Holland that has created this one, the middle one. Uh, this one is an absolutely, uh, Gervenia is uh, a, de a disease resistant plant and it also has a distinction that you could plant it in the garden, in the ground, mm -hmm. or you could keep it as a beautiful potted plant. So Inside? Put, in, no, oh, outdoors. On the patio. This is for outdoors. Okay. The thing that, uh, these don't want a lot of sun. They don't want direct sun. Mm. So you keep it in a patio or maybe in a little dappled shade. Now, in all places of the country, you can have this in your garden, except for where you get really, really cold. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure yeah. that, you know, you get another new one next year or you bring it indoors. But us and people in Florida, Texas, we can plant this in the ground and it'll come back again next year. How do we know which one when we're in our going to buy the, the flowers, which one are indoors and which one are outdoors? Well, do all, they say it? Yes, the... yes. I always look for a tag. You that usually says... find a floral. This one says patio and it's exactly what I want to tell you. This is the third type. This is the patio Gerbera. And the patio Gerbera, as you can see. What it says. Yeah, it's right patio. There. And yeah. what's really awesome about this, you can see the sturdy stems. It is sturdy, yeah. Christina, this is what you want in your patio under shade like this, where you can cut these and put them in your <gasps> the arrangements. House. Mm. So I if love you want to have a Gerbera daisy right. that you can use for cut right. flowers, this is it. And so this you put in a pot. I have beautiful examples here in the front. <clears throat> different colors. Look at the different bicolor uh, patio Gerbera when daisies. When you cut them, are they done? Or are they going to come back? No. And you know why? Look at this root system. 
it has different what they call crowns. One, two, three, four, five. It just keeps growing and spreading and multiplying. And each of this is responsible for five to 10 flowers. So oh, can you imagine? Yeah. So this one, you can have a hundred flowers in one season. And awesome. we're talking from spring till frost. This one in your patio, it will have at least four flowers at any given time. Uh -huh. So you, these are strong. How do you take care of them, water them? Do we need to feed them plant yes. food? Okay. It, it does want you to be nice to them in the sense that perfectly, in a perfect world, you want to feed them a fertilizer for flowering plants once a week. But if you can't do that, at least once a month. And that is enough to keep it pumping out flowers. And the other thing is you want to make sure you water it from underneath into the soil. You don't right. want to ever wet uh, your- Why uh, not? Yeah, because then you can get funguses and stuff. And though this is resistant to disease, mm -hmm. you don't want to mess with it. So I would water it here and make sure that it just stays a little bit moist, not super soaked, never dry. Okay, never dry.